this is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama sci-fi film called High Rise. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a high-rise building, Dr. Robert Lang finds a dog hiding in the garbage-ridden hall and takes it with him. While rummaging through garbage, he comes upon Steel, who invites him to drink with his guest Cosgrove, who's already dead. With nothing to eat, Robert ends up roasting the dog's leg. Three months earlier, Robert moves into the high-rise building, which offers plenty of amenities. The tenants of the upper floors head to their cars in an orderly fashion. However, a pigeon dropping lands on Pangborn, a gynecologist. A psychologist named Talbot casually makes fun of his predicament. One morning, while he's relaxing on his balcony, his neighbor Charlotte drops her liquor bottle onto his floor, startling Robert. Charlotte looks over and flirtatiously admires him. She then invites Robert to her party that evening. Her friend Wilder teases that he hasn't bought her a birthday gift yet, but Charlotte pushes him away, insisting that he's not her type. She tells him to go to work in his television studio, but Wilder insists that he's not drunk enough to start, commenting how his wife has been too depressed to feed him. Later, Robert enjoys a massage in the building's spa and shares to the masseuse that his sister died recently. Afterward, he stops by the garbage chute, which has a warning stating that large bags must be taken to another refuse area. Still, he drops his trash bag in. Robert heads to the School of Physiology, where he lectures medical students. Much to the students' disgust, he starts dissecting a human head until one of the students, Monroe, faints. That evening, at Charlotte's party, Robert chats with Wilder's pregnant wife, Helen. Suddenly, Steele scolds him for clogging the shoot earlier. Robert casually apologizes, but it doesn't alleviate Steele's hostility. To distract him, Helen points out that Steele's wife is going into the bathroom with the newscaster, Cosgrove. After Steele leaves to intervene, Helen watches her husband flirt with Charlotte. Robert feels awkward about the scenario, but thankfully, Helen excuses herself. The rest of the evening is filled with lots of drinking, while Charlotte's son, Toby, watches from his room. The next day, Robert calls the hospital to excuse himself from work. Robert later joins Charlotte at a pool party with the middle to lower floor tenants, including Helen and her kids. Simmons approaches him and takes him to Mr. Royal, the building's architect. In the penthouse, Robert meets Anthony Royal, who shares that he intends to build four more similar buildings around the nearby lake to mimic an open hand with a lake as the palm. Looking at his blueprint, Robert comments that his diagram looks like a psychic event. Royal shares that he had a car accident, but Robert quickly points out that he's not a physiotherapist who can help his injury. Instead, however, Royal invites Robert to a game of squash for his physical exercise. He also invites the doctor to his wife's party the day after tomorrow. On the way to the elevator, Robert notices a painting in the dining hall. Nearby, Royal's wife, Anne, struggles with the air conditioning. He offers to fix it, but ends up breaking it further. That evening, Robert has dinner with Charlotte and gets intimate with her on the balcony. She notes that Royal's interest in him is unusual, given that he's never invited someone over since his accident. She mentions how the building has an unintended social hierarchy and that the walls have ears. Thus, she knows about his sister passing away. At the height of their activities, Toby walks in on them. After the babysitter takes Toby to bed, Charlotte heads inside, telling Robert that they're done with their date. The next day, Robert heads to the market when he chances upon Jane who offers him an autograph. When he doesn't recognize who she is, she walks away, visibly offended. At the checkout, he asks the cashier who Jane is, and she points out that she's a famous actress. That evening, the lights suddenly flicker on the market floor. One evening, Robert heads to Anne's party, only to discover that it's an 18th century costume party. There, Pangborn introduces himself to Monroe's parents, who also reside in the building. Upon hearing Anne and Jane gossiping about him, Pangborn comments how Mr. Royal seems to intend to colonize the sky. Robert joins the conversation, but Anne is displeased about his presence and ridicules his attire. The guests, including Monroe, laugh at him and Robert takes the embarrassment quietly. Soon, Simmons throws him back into the elevator. As the lift heads down, it abruptly stops due to power interruption. Robert tries to navigate the controls but breaks them and sits on the floor out of frustration. The following day, Royal asks about the incident during a game of squash. He excuses that the building is still settling, therefore still has some flaws. Robert shares a rumor that floors 1 to 12 lost their power for several hours, but Royal disregards it. Royal then apologizes on his wife's behalf, explaining that Anne always feels the need 
need to be on the top. He then brings up Robert's relationship with Charlotte, and his comments about her anger Robert. Royal diffuses the situation by noting how the building tenants have forced themselves into strict categories and hide behind luxuries. However, Robert points out that Royal designed the building in that way, with upper-class and lower-class residents separated. Royal defends that he designed the building to become a path to change, but admits that he must have missed something. Days later, the lower floor tenants complain to the caretaker about the power. He spins the blame on them for overloading the system, but Wilder stresses that they bought better conditions than this. The caretaker, however, points out that Wilder is behind payments, so he can't be demanding. When Wilder heads out to smoke, Robert walks up to him and advises him that it's pointless to get Royal's attention over their situation. Robert comments that he actually pities Royal, but Wilder rolls his eyes at the notion. Meanwhile, Wilder's children are stuck at home, and Helen excuses that they need to keep her company. When the news reports a prison riot, Helen switches the channel to prevent her kids from seeing it. At the medical school, Robert receives Monroe's medical reports that note that he's in perfect health. Robert, however, thinks the student is too arrogant and needs to learn his lesson. Later, Robert calls in Monroe and mournfully lies that he has a brain tumor. Monroe quiets at the news, much to Robert's satisfaction. One day, Wilder holds a loud kids party to protest against the building's inequality. Wilder speculates that Robert, who belongs in the middle class floors, is assigned to mitigate the lower tenant's complaints by befriending them. Helen mentions that their children were banned from the pool for being too noisy, angering her husband further. She comments that the upper class doesn't like to be reminded that things could go wrong. But Wilder refuses to allow his children to be humiliated. He rounds up the children and takes them to the pool. Helen gets exasperated at her husband's constant need to protest, while Toby and Robert stay behind. Toby asks about Robert's family, noting that there's a rumor that his entire family is dead. Robert shares that he was not the kind of son his father could be proud of, prompting Toby to reveal that his birth father lives on the upper floors. Robert decides to take Toby home, but the elevators are not working, so they take the stairs. Meanwhile, the upper class tenants gather by the pool when Wilder and the children crash the party. Robert bumps into Simmons at the stairway, and Simmons calls him a social climber. Suddenly, the power goes out in the entire building, including Royal's penthouse. The upper-class tenants leave the pool in defeat, but not without threatening Wilder's career. Monroe struggles to navigate his way back to his apartment and finds the upper-class tenants gathered around the broken elevator. He drunkenly bangs in the controls, but it doesn't work. After taking Toby home, Robert heads to the pool to check on Wilder, but finds that a dog drowned during the chaos. With the entire building out of power, the lower-floor tenants start a party in the hallway. Wilder joins the party and sets his eyes on a drunken woman, but her husband quickly takes her from his hands. The confrontation leads to Wilder beating the man, while Talbot and Charlotte debate about intervening, but conclude not to. Robert tries to stop the fight but gets hit in the face. Wilder encourages Robert to get wild, and after hesitating, he eventually joins in the fun. Unbeknownst to them, a drunk Monroe climbs over a balcony and jumps to his death. In the morning, Charlotte laments at Monroe's fate while Robert tries to get ready for work. However, when he turns on the faucet, no water comes out. Charlotte wonders why Robert hasn't unpacked his boxes, but Robert doesn't answer. She then shares Talbot's theory that every tenant has decided to cross a line, and it'll be worse in the evening. Suddenly, Wilder starts banging on Robert's door, demanding to be introduced to Royal. He wants to make a documentary about the building, starting with Monroe's death that suspiciously isn't being investigated by the police. Robert, who's concerned about Wilder's erratic behavior, doesn't respond until Wilder leaves. He then advises Charlotte to keep away from Wilder, but she scoffs at it. Charlotte thinks Wilder can't be harmful, but Robert ponders over the dog in the pool. Toby then peeks from the upper balcony with a kaleidoscope. Robert playfully asks what he sees through the kaleidoscope, and the boy claims to see the future. Meanwhile, the other upper-class tenants discuss how the poor people have suddenly gotten out of control. Pangborn insists that they show the lower floor tenants that they can throw a better party and control all necessary resources. At the parking lot, Robert sees the car where Monroe landed and feels guilty over lying to the young man. Meanwhile, Wilder gathers his equipment for his documentary, but Helen tells him that he shouldn't be leaving her like he did last night. Helen admits that she envies the people on the higher floor, but Wilder convinces her to be happy like Charlotte. Before he leaves, Helen reminds him that they need money, but instead of leaving more, Wilder takes some bills from the table. Later, Robert can't find his car, so he heads back to his apartment. 
Steel, who'd been trying to unclog the overflowing trash chute, points out the residue left inside the chute. Suddenly, Royal's dog runs past him, so Steel chases after it with a golf club. Tired of the situation, Anne decides to leave, but Royal forbids her and slaps her. Anne simply points out that it's the first time he touched her in months. The elevator dings, and Royal finds his dog injured inside. Over the next few days, Robert struggles with the situation and ends up sleeping in his office. He keeps himself busy with routine exercise, spending more time at work, and going home only to change clothes. All while the other tenants become wilder with each passing day. With a maintenance crew refusing to work, the building becomes littered with garbage bags. Soon, the supermarket has been mostly emptied. Robert heads there to grab paint, while Wilder films the situation in the previously luxurious building. Talbot is filmed while describing how the tenants have shed their manners and become savages. Pangborn, Simmons, and Cosgrove accuse Wilder of instigating the chaos. They beat him while Talbot continues filming. When Robert tries to leave, two men wrestle the paint can out of his hands. This leads to a scuffle, while the others simply watch nonchalantly. Eventually, Robert wins the fight and takes his paint. Toby walks alongside him, admiring his victory, until the crowd goes wild again at Wilder's defeat. Robert returns to his apartment and maniacally paints the walls. Charlotte takes Toby to Talbot's place, but doesn't find him as Pangborn has taken him captive. With all the chaos, Helen leaves her children in a room where the other mothers and children hide. Helen goes to Robert, who happily shows her his apartment's new color. Their conversation soon leads them to quick intimacy. Meanwhile, Royal tries to work in his penthouse, but is distracted by the promiscuous people who've invited themselves into his home. Simmons tells him that his wife is downstairs, and Pangborn warns that she could get herself killed. Robert heads to the lobby where Wilder, who was thrown out of the building by Pangborn earlier, walks by him. Unaware of who he is, Wilder introduces himself and warns him to be careful. Suddenly, a police officer knocks on the entrance and asks Royal if everything is alright. Royal shrugs off his concerns and pretends he has things under control. Eventually, Royal finds his wife, who's being forced to run on a conveyor belt by the lower floor tenants. Wilder then demands the key to the penthouse from the Royal's former maid. The maid suggests using Charlotte to bait Royal, implying that they had a relationship before. The maid then hands Wilder a gun, claiming that it's his key to the penthouse. Meanwhile, Helen snuggles with Robert after their activities. While trying to fix his tie, she shares that Charlotte mentioned that he was the best amenity in the building, which Helen now agrees to. When Helen leaves, Steele takes notice and suggests using her to barter for food. Robert refuses to do so. As the building continues down into chaos, Robert thinks of Helen's comment about him. On her way to her children, however, Helen gets captured. She screams in despair while Wilder goes crazy in Charlotte's apartment. When Charlotte arrives, he reveals that he knows that Royal is Toby's biological father. He then drags her into Toby's room while she's kicking and screaming. The next day, a beaten up Charlotte is forced to serve Wilder food and liquor, then looks over the balcony, hoping to see Robert. Robert, however, is inside and receives a letter. In the penthouse, the upper floor tenants discuss Wilder's uncontrollable behavior. Simmons shares that he asked Robert to lobotomize Wilder, but Robert insisted on making a psychological evaluation first. Pangborn urges them to humor him, confident that they can convince Robert to do the deed. Upon learning that everyone except for Cosgrove has taken leaves from their jobs, Pangborn is satisfied, highlighting that everyone needs to work on the power struggle within the building instead. He insists on taking out Wilder first, then letting the lower floor tenants eliminate each other. Afterward, Royal can remodel the lower floors to their advantage. With the decision made, the men decide to butcher Anne's horse for dinner. Royal sarcastically asks Anne if she's still enjoying the party, so she slaps him. All the while, Talbot is tied up and watching the scene. After cleaning himself up, Robert navigates around the hallway and finds some of the tenants watching a video of Cosgrove with Steele's wife. As revenge, the tenants ambush Cosgrove on his way home. Robert heads to Charlotte's apartment and finds Wilder. Wilder laments leaving Helen, noting that he can't control himself without her. Robert takes notes, as Wilder expounds that living in the high-rise requires a special behavior that he thought he was ready for. Wilder points out that self-contained people like Robert are the real danger because they're immune to psychological pressures. With things calming, Jane and Anne find Charlotte and tend to her wounds. Others begin doing laundry at the pool, while Robert cleans up Charlotte's apartment. Helen is forced to clean up the royal's penthouse but goes into labor. 
After cleaning up, Robert leaves the apartment, not knowing that Toby has been watching from a hole in the ceiling. As soon as he steps out, Simmons corners Robert and drags him to the penthouse. Robert refuses to lobotomize Wilder, noting that he might be the sanest man in the building. Because of this, Pangborn ties a makeshift wing around his neck, threatening to throw him out, but Royal walks in and stops them. That evening, Helen gives birth in the penthouse. During this, Robert joins Royal for dinner, who refuses to leave the building despite its state. Royal believes that his building's failure has opened a chance for the tenants to experience a new life. Soon, Wilder climbs out of the vent and searches for Helen. He spots Royal in the garden and demands that he confess to orchestrating the chaos and inequality. Wilder accuses him of hiding behind women and children, angering Royal. Royal attacks Wilder, but he shoots him with a gun. Hearing the gunshot, the women from the upper floors, including Charlotte, corner Wilder and attack him, while Toby watches everything through his kaleidoscope. The next day, Robert and Helen help clean up the building, while Anne and the other women are happy to care for Helen's baby. With the declining mental health of the tenants, Robert considers opening a private practice, though he too suffers and starts to refer to himself in the third person. After cooking Royal's dog's leg, he reunites with Charlotte, and wonders if the second high-rise building will also fall the way they did. Charlotte asks him who he'd been talking to, and Robert answers that he was talking to the building. Outside, Toby has created a radio tower, where he listens to a recording of Margaret Thatcher, declaring that there will never be political freedom as long as there is state capitalism. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.